We are back as we continue this special edition of Straight Talk focused on the Port of Long Beach, joined now by the president of the Board of Harbor Commissioners, Nick Schrammick. And Nick, welcome to our show. Thank you, Art. And I'd also like to thank you for inviting us, especially at this special time with our celebration for our centennial coming up. You bet. Uh, Nick, you are uh, the head of the board. You're the president. And uh, uh, we heard earlier what an incredible economic engine this port really is. Well, first of all, I'd like to say, if, for me, you know, my background, it's really an honor being leading the Harbor Commission at this time because of all the things going on and, and the importance of all the, the things that we're doing with trade, with jobs, with the economy, with the environment. So, uh, yeah, over the past hundred years, it's fun to look back, past hundred years, and what we were really established to do with jobs and the economy. And, and to see where we are today, we have uh, upheld what we have, uh, what we were started to do and what we're uh, continuing doing. And we're looking to the future. As a Harbor Commissioner, what we do is we set the policy and we oversee the operations of the port. Uh, the policy, if you look back 100 years to where we are today, it keeps changing and it should change because we have to look out 10, 20, 50 years from now. So policy that we set today which means uh, uh, building new infrastructure and where we go with that, what we do with the, with the terminals, what we do with the different piers to, to help the economy, to help jobs, to help the city is very, very important and also balance it with the environment. And you are embarking on a major capital improvement program now. Actually, we're embarking on a couple. Mill Harbor is going to be huge. It'll have thousands of jobs. Um, during construction for the next five to ten years. The bridge, that's going to be a the real big one. The that's Gerald De the replacing the Gerald Desmond yes, Bridge. Exactly. It's going to have thousands of construction jobs, engineering jobs, you know, excellent jobs over the next about five years. And I read somewhere that it's one of the largest single capital projects ongoing in the state. Yeah, it's it's nearly a billion dollars. For a bridge. For a bridge. One hell of a bridge. It's a big bridge, and, uh, <laughs> well, but one that's necessary. To but you need it for the larger container ships to go underneath. Right, and I don't think anybody could have imagined when it was built in 1968 that uh, we were going to have the amount of international traffic that's going over that bridge. About 15% of the nation's cargo goes over that bridge. So it's kind of a good problem that caused the need to replace the bridge, this increase in traffic and the growth of the size of the ships. Right, and even though about 70% of it is passenger traffic, uh, passenger cars, uh, we still need the wider lanes, we need uh, uh, to have that bridge heightened. So it's, uh, it's a key project, and like Chris, yeah. uh, Commissioner Ceramic said, it's going to create uh, about 4,000 jobs yeah. a year for but the next five years. But it's years. also getting dangerous. There's cement falling off, we have yeah. nets at the bottom, we, we uh, lovingly called diapers. Yes. Uh, and, and so it really needs to be replaced. It's outworn its useful life. Nick, let me turn back to a question I asked uh, uh, Dick in the first segment about the role vis a vis of the port vis a vis the city. Uh, uh, just articulate your understanding of what the proper role of the port is vis a vis the city of Long Beach as far as financial support. Yeah. Well, we are part of the city, okay? We have always supported the city. But I think you need to step back and really look. We are a trustee for the state, the port is. So anything we do, we have to keep in the back of our minds. Uh, we have to actually make sure that it's for the benefit of all the people in this state, not just the city of Long Beach. But, you know, with, after saying that, now we are part of the city of Long Beach. We have supported the city of Long Beach in every way we can uh, through a number of projects. I think the numbers are somewhere in the seven to eight hundred million dollars yeah. that have gone to the city in different forms through, Dick's already talked about the Thailand's transfer and the convention center, other. And your primary ahead. obligation, of course, is, is running the port and, and creating the funds necessary to uh, be able to float bonds at, at a reasonable interest rate yeah. for, or for these capital improvements that need to be made. Yeah, well, that's, that's the, the part we have to be very careful with because any new project we're doing now, we're going to have to bond money. We're going to have to borrow money. And the interest rate is very important to us. And so uh, the more you transfer out, the more money we have to, um, to generate and borrow. So uh, 
you know, it's a, it's a balancing we have to be, act. We have, it's a very, it's a balancing act that we have to be very careful with. Nick, we're coming to the end of the segment, but you're a local boy made good. You went to local <laughs> schools, Poly, Long Beach State, and uh, you've been a longtime resident of the community. Uh, what, uh, what does this centennial mean to you personally uh, as well, a longtime resident? Like, like you said, I've ra been raised my whole life in this city. Uh, I love the city. I've known, you know, through my neighbors, through my community, I've seen the impact of the port uh, from a good standpoint, the economy, the jobs, but I've also seen some of the negative things that have happened. And that's, and in fact, about 15 years ago, I you actually- were on the other side. I was on the other side fighting a project that would impact our neighborhood in, you know, because I felt that it was gonna really have a detrimental So you effect. must be very pleased to see the port adopt this green port philosophy and, and, and be, on, be on, on the other side now. Well, a absolutely, I'm a leader. I know we need to do infrastructure and we yeah. need to continue because it's economy and jobs. But we have to, to grow green, we have to really be environmentally friendly, we have to do everything as close as And you, I think it's true that the port is known throughout the world as a leader in environmental sensitivity. Well, I think that's what I'm most proud about, is we are environmental steward for yeah. uh, known around the world. So people you're leading the charge. And people others... come to us yeah. asking how to do some of the things that we do. And when you travel around the world, do you get questions about what are you guys doing and well, what can we learn? And... All the time. We even sign MOAs, MOUs, with, with yeah. different ports from around the world so we can transfer some of our technology. Well, thank you for joining us. We're going to say goodbye now. and will be joined by uh, Dr. Canner in a right. moment, but thank you for all your work on behalf of the Thank you for city. having us, Art. Okay. We'll be back with more of Straight Talk after these messages. Welcome back. We're joined now by one of the recognized authorities throughout the world in environmental planning, Dr. Robert Kanner. Uh, Dr. Bob, welcome to our show. Thank you, Art. Thanks for having me. Tell us about the Green Port, what this port is doing, and your role in it. Well, the Green Port policy adopted about five years ago is one of our you know, key programs. Um, it was a major elevation. We were always a good environmental steward and we wanted to really take it to new heights as we look forward to a continued growth. And so it was a, a commitment by our board and by the staff to, to live green, sustainable practices. And more importantly, it's a promise to our community to make sure that we make our lives all pleasant while still supporting an international trade. So really walking the walk. Walking the walk, absolutely. And there have been some major accomplishments to date and much in the future. Absolutely. The, the Greenport policy embraces water, air, wildlife, and all of those areas we have improvement. But our, I think our most challenging program that we have initiated is in air quality. And we rolled that right out immediately after the Greenport policy with our Clean Trucks program, uh, which reduced air uh, pollution by about 80 percent. Uh, just incredible. About two years ahead of our anticipated schedule, which was great. Slowing vessels down. Uh, burning less fuel, therefore putting out less air pollution, a lot of other measures, and using technology to help us. So technology has been a real aid for looking forward. And Dick, we heard earlier uh, how there is projected substantial growth in the port in the years to come, but how do we measure success? Is, is, at the end of the day, despite this increase in traffic and increase in cargo and increase in trucks, there still will be less air, uh, better air quality than from the base year. And I think that's the real measure art of, of a successful port, is whether you can grow cargo, increase jobs, uh, and do it in a way that reduces uh, and mitigates the uh, environmental imprint that you have on that community. And that's what Dr. Canner and his staff and, and really the whole Port of Long Beach have been able to do. We're models around the world. Uh, you look at Seattle, New York, uh, they're all rolling out programs now. We've had them in place two, three, four years, and they're really modeled after our success. And you both travel around the world and are recognized as experts, and they're asking you about this stuff. Yeah, and we're, we're proud to do that. As, as Commissioner Shramick said in the previous segment, uh, we've signed memorandums of under, uh, understanding with other ports around the world where we can share best environmental practices. Dr. Kanner speaks to these ports. He speaks at international forums to say, this is what we've done. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of persistence, but... Uh, but we're very proud of those accomplishments, and uh, and they're well, recognized. 
Bob, it's one thing to take a, a given static model and reduce pollution, but it's another thing, quite another thing, to take a model that's growing in size and still get a net reduction from the base year. Absolutely, and, and that's been our goal. We've, we've looked at, at setting that with the idea that we have known technologies. And so we've got what I would say is a conservative goal, and we've been able to actually exceed where we thought we would be already. So we're hoping that technology will help us even get better results into the future, reducing health risks by 85% by uh, 2023, for instance. That's our goal uh, coming up. And you do metrics each year measuring where you are. That's important. That transparency in reporting is a, makes us accountable. We're showing the public exactly what our numbers are and how we're doing. So that our report cards are right out there for everyone to see and to make sure that we are truly doing walking the walk. And among the contributions to that are using cleaner, low sulfur fuels in cargo ships coming in, uh, cold ironing, cold ironing uh, plugging ships, plugging into, the ships into the electricity, and, uh, uh, and technological advances. Absolutely. And we're promoting, we're testing a lot of new technologies in our port, in, an, in a port environment to see if they work. And if they do, we're in integrating them into operations. Bob, we have a minute left in the segment. What do you want to say to the viewers about uh, <laughs> the environment? Well, watch us. We're going to continue to make an amazing strides in, in keeping this environment clean and still bringing the cargo in and creating the jobs and the economic benefits that the port is known for. So environmental sensitivity and economic growth can both go together. They are They're not, not necessarily, exclusive. they are not mutually exclusive. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, we will be back with the remaining portions of our show after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome to McKenna's on the Bay, where fine dining is complemented with a breathtaking view. McKenna's is a restaurant of incredible ambiance, providing service and cuisine with style, class, and romance. The menu offers a variety of appetizers, serious seafood, prime steaks and oyster bar, and specialty entrees for either lunch or dinner. McKenna's on the Bay features patio dining, nightly entertainment, and two banquet facilities. No matter what your occasion, McKenna's on the Bay is like being on vacation. Join us today at McKenna's on the Bay. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember, Polly's. 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. those who are closest to you, from our family to yours. McCarty's Jewelry, since 1932. I feel we are very fortunate to have a world-class port uh, here in our community with the economic contributions that we have talked about uh, on this special. Port of Long Beach has been voted the best seaport in North America 15 out of the 16 years that the award has existed. And want to thank you guys again for coming and sharing uh, your expertise on our show and, and wish you well. And, and, and your commitment to the environment is, uh, is one that's very meaningful to our community. So, Dr. Bob, thank you for being our guest. And, and Dick, thank you so much for the work you do in the community and for joining us tonight. Thanks, Art. Okay. And thank you at home for watching us. And please join us next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by Southern California Edison and the Press-Telegram. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable worldwide 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.